We're here to worship the Lord this morning. I believe there's three main things that we do when we come together and have church. One is we focus on worship. The second one, we, we focus on the Word of God. And the third thing, we focus on prayer. Yeah, we get some other stuff involved in the midst of things too, but those are our, our three main things that we do. And we want to just nail those this morning in a, in a, a good way. And my prayer is that uh, God will touch you right where you are today. And he's going to lift you up and help you have a, a stronger faith and more hope today than um, maybe you've had. Mike's going to lead us into worship, and let's just get with it. Good morning. Oh, let's try that again. Good morning. There we go. We're in the house of the Lord. Let's be excited. I don't know about you, but I look forward to these days when we get together with the family and worship. Speaking of that, the call to worship today is in 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 17 and 18. And it says, Now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Aren't you glad for that freedom today? Verse 18, it says, as we go into worship, think about this. And we who with unveiled faces all reflect the Lord's glory are being transformed into his likeness with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Let's think about that as we go into worship today. Good morning. Good morning. It's good to see everybody. Glad to be back. Just uh, again, just love to be here with everybody. And uh, to hear you guys' beautiful voices, let's, uh, let's stand in this worship this morning.
There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. There's no shadow you won't I don't know about you, but I'm glad for that reckless love that comes chasing after me. Doesn't matter what pit I'm in, doesn't matter where I'm at, what I'm doing or in the middle of, God is chasing after me. He's chasing after every one of us. A um, couple of prayer requests that I've made mention to me um, this past week. Um, if you didn't know, uh, Eugene's mom had fallen the other day and dislocated her uh, shoulder and broke a hip. They had surgery uh, last night and I uh, got word this morning that she did very well. Uh, the surgery went well. Um, need to pray for Patty Rockhold. Uh, she's not doing well in the rehab facility. Just pray for a movement of God that she gets to where she needs to be to get the care that she needs and you know that the Spirit of God would just surround her in that situation. Um, I want to pray for uh, Renee Robinson, she had a co-worker, um, had a medical crisis. I don't know the details, but said that her son uh, almost lost his life, um, but is in a critical condition and um, stable, but still uh, got some issues going through. Um, Charlotte Rogers, um, her caregiver husband, Darren, needs prayer. I was told to mention that. Um, didn't give me any details on that either. Um, uh, good news. Um, many of you know my father-in-law, Jim, has been going through um, cancer treatments and uh, the kind of run out of options with the chemo. It's just it's not enough. And um, so they're doing um, immune therapy and pain management right now. Um, One of the things they wanted to do because his birthday was coming up is to get him a chair to help him get up out of the chair a little easier. It, it comes up a little higher, but it also massages and gives him the heat that his body needs to not be in so much pain. And to watch the outpouring of God's people into a family that has given so much to so many. They even gave when it hurt or when they all they had was the rent money. They said someone was in need and they gave it. And to watch them humbly accept gifts of love, it more than met the need for the chair that they needed and other expenses that they had. And I want to personally thank you on their behalf because they would not publicly go out and ask 
But we posted it and God's family came through in a great way. With that being said, I want to challenge our family. Take the time to tell those that are around you how much they mean to you. Don't wait till it's too late and say, oh, I really appreciated this person because they were so awesome and wonderful. Tell them before it's too late. Show them how much they matter to you. Tell them, I appreciate what you do for your family, the example that you are, what you do for the kingdom. I believe we need to do that even more so in these days. With that being said, let's pray to God our Father. God, we thank you and we praise you for the privilege and the freedom that we have and the choice that you gave us to choose to serve you or not. But Lord, I thank you more importantly for those of us that choose to serve you each and every day. When we wake up, our first breath is thank you, Lord. And our last breath before we go to sleep is thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and all that you're going to do. I thank you, Lord, for each and every person that I call family, whether they're biologically family or not, but more importantly, they're spiritual family. People that I would go to the ends of the moon for, ends of the earth for, to do what I can to help them. Lord God, I pray for a special touch upon Eugene's mom as she is going through uh, this recovery time, as she had fallen in and uh, broke her hip and surgery went well. Lord, I just pray that you be there for her. Touch her body, touch her mind, touch her heart and her soul. Help her to recover. Lord, I pray for Patty Rockhold. It just seems like every time you turn around, something else has happened that kind of knocks her down and not allows her to, to have any moment of of rest or relaxation or a breath of just rest. I pray that you touch her body. I pray, Lord, that you touch her spirit. And Lord, to surround her with people that are going to care for her and, and push her ever so gently, but enough to keep her moving in a positive direction. I pray, God, that you just love on her, love on her family as they try to help in whichever way they can. Lord, I pray for uh, Jim Merritt and Alice Merritt, Lord, as they're dealing with this um, cancer situation. God, I just pray that you touch his body physically. Touch Alice's body emotionally and spiritually, Lord, as they're dealing with this crisis at this moment. I pray, Lord, for Renee as, as she is going through some uh, heart issues. Uh, Lord, I thank you for all that you're doing in that situation. I pray for her co-worker and the, the situation that he is in. And Lord, I pray for uh, Charlotte Rogers, the caregiver, her husband. Lord, I don't know what's going on, but Lord, it was said that he needed a touch from you. I pray, Lord God, that you touch him. Be with them. I pray, Lord, that you bless this family of God, that as we move through this time and this situation, Lord, that you guide us and direct us. Help us to develop ministries that minister to the body and to the kingdom and to everyone around us, Lord, that they may know you as Lord and Savior and walk in that light. Pray for Pastor Tony and Pastor Jay as they do their perspective messages, Lord. May we listen intently to the spirit that you would have, that you would have, and then listen to the lesson that you would have for us. In Jesus' name, amen. God keeps his promises, but sometimes people don't. Welcome to the Journey Today Show. And uh, as you can see, Jeremy is doing something really strange again. So what are you doing? Oh, it's easy. I'm just trying to count all of these individual grains of sand. Uh, why? Shh. Hold on. Um, because I went to bed early last night and I was unable to count all of the stars in the sky. So you think you can, you think you can count all of the star, all of the grains of sand there? Yeah. It's impossible. You're crazy. I'm just, I'm just totally confused why you want to do that. Well, I'm trying to see if God keeps his promises. What? Yeah. Our big idea today 
was that God keeps his promises. And we like talked about the fact that God promised Abraham that he would make like his family oh. more than the stars in the sky. And he even goes on and say, says like more than like the dust on all of the earth. And so I, I'm just trying to figure out like, has God kept that promise? Mm, I guess that's a good question. <laughs> Speaking of questions, I, I have one for them. When is a time that someone has failed to keep a promise to you, and why do you think they failed? Why don't you take a couple seconds and talk about that? That's deep. So you managed it? Yeah, and James, I'm wondering, what you think about that question? Well, it actually made me think of a promise that wasn't kept to me by somebody sitting at this table. Jeremy, you know how much, as a Brit, I love July 4th. <laughs> yeah. And uh, you get to blow things up yep. uh, on July 4th. That's the best bit for me. And um, can you remember, you promised me on July 4th that we would blow up a watermelon. I did promise and you what, that. When is it now? We're September yeah. and we still haven't done it. So you haven't kept that promise to me, Jeremy. I, it, that's kind of disappointing. Okay, hold on. I, let's, I'm going to keep that promise to you right now. Excuse me. Excuse me. So, let's blow <laughs> up a watermelon. We're going to blow up a watermelon yeah. here on the T Journey Today show. Let's do it. You want, you like, it. You want to. Are you ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah let's do here it. we go. So, we're going to blow up this watermelon. With super snaps. Well, yeah. This is going to be awesome. Now, make sure and be safe because this is going to blow up big. All right, here we go. Oh, okay, one, in your ears, everyone. One, two, three. Totally not working out. It's still quite fun. Like I thought it was going to. Hey, who doesn't love doing that? Okay, but the watermelon no, is still intact. I, I promised we need to you. Blow it up, Jeremy. I promised you we were going to blow up a watermelon. We're going to. So I, I got another idea. Let's here. Follow me outside. Taking that with us. Oh wait. I've got one more idea. <laughs> that was awesome. You know what I mean? That was awesome. Thank you for keeping your promise. Yeah, yeah, I promised that we would blow up a watermelon. And I do apologize. It took longer than I thought it was going to. Um, but, you know, we did it. Boom. Thank you. Thank you. Blew it up. Hey, I wonder, um, just thinking about Abraham and God's promise for him. I wonder if there's any point where he just felt like, you know, God's not going to mm. keep this promise. I'm not sure about this. Mm. Man, I, mm. you know, like, I, I personally think he would have had to at some point in time uh, have thought that. But it makes me think of today's verse, uh, Psalm 145.13. You can read it with us right here. It's, the Lord is faithful and he will keep all of his promises. He is loving towards everything he has made. And even while Abraham was... I'm sure questioning like what God was doing. I, I love the fact he believed that. Yeah. All right. So we're going to encourage you now as a family or as a group just to get into this question. So God keeps his promises. What promises are most important to you and why? Press pause now and talk about that. All right. Well, I imagine that all of us can think of promises that are important to us. Just like I believe we all could think of promises that people have broken to us. Um, 
there's thousands of promises in God's word though. And so many that it would take you quite some time to go down and read and write them down. But I wrote down a few of them that are kind of important to me, um, that he will always be with you, that he will protect you, that he will be your strength, that he will answer you, that he will provide for you, that he will give you peace, and that he will always love you. Those are some of them that are really important to me when I think about God and his promises. So um, I have this hole here that's like the size of a dime, and I have a quarter, and it seems impossible, right, to put a quarter through the size of a dime hole, right? I'll get back to that here in just a minute. Well, there was a time in my life when I was really wanting another child. I know, right, I've got six, but at that point I had five, and I had been praying for another child for many years, actually. And God had given me this vision that there was going to come at a point this little girl that had brown hair and it was curly and she had dark brown eyes. Well, I can tell you that I had to pray that for five years before that little bundle actually came. But God is faithful and he hears our prayers and he cares. And, and that isn't necessarily a promise of the Bible, but what God says in his word is that he hears and knows my needs and my desires of my heart. So the fact that God heard that, he kept his promise to me that he hears me. So this quarter, there's times that things are going to seem impossible sometimes to get to or even get through. But if you take this quarter and go in the normal route, you're right, will not work. But if we take this piece of paper, hold on a minute, and we fold it so that it changes the shape of the hole. Let me get the quarter there. And you bend it, going through a different direction actually allows the impossible to become possible. I want you to remember, it may not always seem like your prayers are getting answered in the time or the way that you would like, or that life is even sometimes going the way that you would desire for it to go. But what I want you to know is that God is faithful and he does keep his promises. Do you believe that this morning, that God keeps his promises? I guess I got a couple of amens out there. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> I'm wondering about your hope level this morning. How much hope do you have on a, like a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the maximum hope necessary in your life to, for, for God to just come through on everything, and, and then 1 is down there, oh, I don't know, maybe God's around, I'm not so sure. Do you have hope this morning? Well, let, let's, let's find out how much hope we have. We got pretty definite split between this side and that side. Listen to this, listen to this phrase, okay? You guys are going to say this in just a minute. I have hope. Yes, I do. I have hope. How about you? Okay? Let, let's figure this out. Let's start with this side. You guys say it to that side, all right? Let's say, I have hope. Yes, I do. I have hope. How about you? Come on. I have hope, yes I do, I have hope, how about you? Oh, come on. Well, on a scale of one to ten, I'd say these guys win over here. <laughs> All right. Whatever that scale is. All right. Hope. Hope when you need it most. We have been in these days for a few months now, all this craziness going on, and we can be in a, a sense of, well, we're just making it from day to day, week to week, month to month, never knowing what's going to happen next. And perhaps in the midst of this 
you're battling anxiety or stress or you're trying to just to kind of get adjusted to this new normal, as they say. Well, here we are in the midst of God's presence, and he wants us to have hope. Hope in the midst of anything and everything that's going on. Here's some, some truths, I believe, are here and some, some things we need to remember. We need to remember that God is our strength. If you're looking for your strength and your, well, your stability and everything else from, from anywhere else, you're looking in the wrong place. God is our strength. Psalm 46, verses 1 through 3 say, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. Selah. Over in John 16, Jesus said, These things I have spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you will have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The reality is we're going to face junk in our lives. We're going to have stuff that goes wrong. We're going to be put in places that we... We're just troubled all over the place. We're enduring a pandemic. We're facing unexpected and difficult battles. We're going to continue to do that. You know what I, I thought as many times have I, as I've heard this word that this is unprecedented things that are going on in this world? You know what? That's wrong. <laughs> These things are precedented. All this stuff has happened before. Pandemics have been around before this time. So God knows. God's been around a long time. And he's been through all the stuff that has happened since day one of the world. And he knows, he knows exactly what we're facing today. He, he'll be with us to be our help. He'll be with us to be our strength, to get through whatever we have to go through. We can even let go of fear and truly have faith in Him. Isn't that the challenge? Isn't that the struggle that we're facing? Either we're succumbing to fear or we're grown in faith. Which are you choosing to, to experience? Jesus overcame the world so that we could have peace, so that we could have hope, so that we could have faith. And that's all wrapped up in him. Secondly, we need to remember to turn our thoughts. We need to be in charge of our thought life. Isn't that true in these days? I don't know how many of you sit in front of that TV and just listen to the, the junk every day, every day. Isn't it awful? If, you just, if that's all you're listening to, you're going to be lower than low, right? If that's all you're letting your brain be focused on, you're going to be in a desperate spot. But the scripture says in Colossians 3, 2, set your mind on things above, not on things of the earth. Get your eyes off of the junk that's going on around here and get, get focused on God. What's he, want you, what's he want you to think about as you look to him? It's not about all the negativity of this world. In fact, Paul said in Philippians 4, be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. You feel like you're losing your mind with all this stress and, and fear that's going on? Well, change your mind. Change your focus. Start looking up instead of looking down so much. And we will find peace that God has for us. And the scripture says he will guard our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. 
We may be overwhelmed with fear and anxiety and worry. We may constantly be thinking about all this junk. May the instruction from God's Word give us new practices to direct our minds to God and His goodness, His love and His mercy, even during this difficult, difficult time in our lives. Whenever our minds wander to what causes us fear or anxiety, we've just got to stop. Got to stop it. And instead, begin to pray and give our worries over to Jesus. You know, one thing we can do in the midst of the, the worry is to look at our record of God coming through before. Do, do you have a record of when God has answered prayer for you? Do, you? do you have somewhere in your mind or maybe even written down someplace? These are the things God has done. And he came through, yes, just in the nick of time. But you know what we do? What we should do? Instead of worrying about all the junk that's going on around us, we need to go back to that list of the way God has come through before. And that helps us grow our faith. Remember, remember, remember God is with us. Psalm 23, 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Even in the very lowest of times, God is there. Do you sense his presence? Do you feel like he's a million miles away? Jesus said in Matthew 28, 20, teaching them to observe all things that I've commanded you, and lo, I am with you even to the end of the age. Do you believe God's with you? Do you believe God's with you? All right. God is with you. He's right there. He's watching over what's going on in your life. He's, he's helping you right where you are. Don't, don't get to believe in the lie that Satan has for you, that God has forgotten about you, God has moved away, God doesn't care. Don't believe those lies. He is right there and he does care. What a comfort that one of the last things that Jesus wanted to tell his followers was, I am with you everywhere. To the, till your last breath, I will be there with you. We need to remind ourselves of that. God's promises. He keeps them. God is our comfort, and he will be with us no matter what we're going through. Next, remember, in him is shelter and safety. Psalm 16, 1 says, Preserve me, O God, for in you I put my trust. In you. Proverbs eighteen ten. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. I like those, those mental images we get out of Scripture of who God is and what He does. What are some of the names that, that we call Jesus? We, we call Him the bread of life. We call Him the living water. We, we call Him the Lamb of God that takes away the, the sin of the world, right? We, we have all these tags that we, we put on Him. On God, there's also some, some tags. He's our shield. He's our defender. He's our strong and mighty tower. He's our rock. He's our, <laughs> he's our rear guard. He's got a shelter all the way around. He's our armor that Paul writes about in Ephesians 6. Hide in him. Get behind him. He will protect you. He will be your shelter. He will be your safety. Whatever happens in the weeks and months and even years out ahead, stay in him. You know, that old insurance commercial said, you're in good hands with, yeah. right? Guess what? You're in better hands with God. He's got good hands. And he is a, a good, good father like we've saying about this morning. 
Next, remember, God will deliver us. Psalm 32, 7. You are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall surround me with songs of deliverance. That's beautiful. Over in Psalm 34, verse 19, it says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Has God gotten you out of all your messes? Has God delivered you from every pain and shortage and, and problem? I think there's times we misread some of the scripture and we maybe read more into it than, than is there. Will God protect us and shield us and help us? He has done amazing things in our past, hasn't he? And we, we've got that list of all the ways he came through before. He's answered prayer. He brought deliverance to our children. He brought health and restored so many. There, there's just a lot of things we've got listed. But is, but is God going to get us out of every pain and illness and problem in our world? One day he will. One day he will. One day this soul of ours is going to be separated from this body that we have. Right? These bodies aren't going to last forever. My dad, he, he made it within a couple of months of, of making it to 95 years old in that body that he got back in, what was it, 1913 or whatever it was. Oh no, it wasn't 13, it was 23. Anyway, somewhere back in there. My dad lived almost 100 years in that body. Well, in our perspective, how long is 100 years? Man, that's, that's forever. That just seems so long. I can remember back when I was a kid and I looked at the seniors in high school. Those guys are so big and mature. And now I look at them and they're just babies. It's all perspective, right? It's all, it's all kind of relative. But 100 years, what's 100 years? From our perspective, it seems like a long, long, long time. But the scripture talks about our lives being like a vapor that comes up in the morning and by, and by noon is just gone. Or the, the flower in the field that, that sprouts up and pops up there early in the day and when the heat of the day comes on, it, it's, it's just fizzled out and it's, it's done for. A hundred years is kind of like that compared to eternity, right? I don't know, I've, I feel like, man, I've, I've just blinked and, man, my, my life has gone. Shoo. Yeah, I can remember back when I was little. I can remember back in my first year of life. I can remember just a few little tidbits. But then all through my life, all those things that have gone on, all the relationships I've had and all the the amazing events I've been a part of and, and getting married and having kids and then all these grandkids and it just seems like it just keeps on moving, right? I don't know how many more of these years I got in this world, but I imagine it's just gonna go by pretty fast. But how long is eternity? Eternity lasts forever. Eternity lasts forever. And what is God more concerned about delivering? These bodies that are going to be spent in a few years or our souls that are going to last forever? He is much more concerned about that soul than he is this physical body. 
are we going to have pains and challenges? Yeah, the scripture said, in this world you will have tribulation. Yay, that's life. You're going to have challenges. You're going to have struggles. And you know what? The victories probably just get a little bit brighter and better because of the <laughs> where you had to come out of to get there. God is more interested in delivering our souls to eternity than he is our bodies from any pain and struggle in this world. God will deliver those who are his own. This pandemic has a, a time limit to it. It'll be over one of these days. At some point, we don't know when it'll end. And we're gonna hopefully learn some things through it all. But most of all, I hope that we learn God has been faithful. God has been with us in the worst of times. And he's been with us in the best of times. And he's gonna get us through to a time that is all, <laughs> way past all this stuff in heaven. Something I heard this week that I just wanted to throw in here, I think it kind of ties in. We need to quit trying to control what we can't. We should control what we can. Remember the serenity prayer? Anybody want to try to quote it? Huh. Well, 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 we'll just throw it up here. Let's say it together. Here we go. God... Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. You know what? I thought that was it for that prayer. No, that's just the start of this prayer. There's some more to it. I want to share it with you this morning. God grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, courage to change the things I can, and wisdom to know the difference. And here's how it goes on. Living one day at a time, enjoying one moment at a time, accepting hardship as the pathway to peace. Taking as Jesus did, this sinful world as it is, not as I would have it. Trusting that he will make all things right if I surrender to his will, that I may be reasonably happy in this life. And yeah, we want to be happy today, don't we? But it goes on, and supremely happy with him forever in the next. Amen. Yes, we want to have peace and happiness and, and just... Uh, an easier way of going on through this world. That probably isn't our pathway. Amen? It probably is not the road we're gonna, gonna take. There's gonna be bumps, there's gonna be detours, there's gonna be challenges along the way, setbacks and all kinds of losses. But in the midst of it all, we have God. Amen? We have God. He is with us. He's promised he's going to help us all the way through. And one of these days, this, this life is over. And then it's heaven. For the Christian, that is. You know, my, my father-in-law used to say when every time he'd hit a birthday, he's, you know, he talked about getting one year older. He says, that's, that's better than the alternative. And I got to thinking, I don't understand that. Sticking around in these bodies that just continually fall apart and get you know, gets weaker and weaker and sicker and sicker, that, that's, that, that's better than the alternative? The alternative is what? Heaven. You know what? Heaven's not going to be a bad place to go to for those who are prepared. The challenge is, are you prepared? Do you know Jesus as your Savior? Have you accepted him into your life? 
And do you know him right now today? So that when that last day comes in your life, whenever that is, you'll be assured he's going to save your soul, deliver your soul for eternity. Let's pray. Father, in the midst of this service, we have focused on this idea of hope, of faith, of, of assurance in you. Lord, we, we, we read your promises, and Lord, we, we, we bank on these promises. We want you to come through, and the biggest promise I lean on is that if we confess our, our sins, he's, you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thank you for that promise. Help us to do our part of that. If we do ours, I know you'll do yours. And so today also I'm, I'm thankful for the other promises, the promises of your constant presence, your, your never failing love, your, your, your ability to shield us from things that you don't want to affect our lives. But Lord, thank you for helping us when you do allow things to affect our lives because it's in those tough things that we grow and we become more dependent on you. And we probably grow a greater relationship with you in the midst of the hard things than we do the easy. And Lord, we're thankful for the promise of heaven to come and eternity with you. Oh Lord, I wanna make it there. I want all of us to make it there. I just believe, Lord, that you're working today to accomplish that. I praise you already. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's stand together and we're going to sing. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. In desperation, I turned to heaven and spoke your name into the night. Then through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. Is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my shame and bear my shame. The cross has spoken, I am forgiven. The King of kings calls me his own. Savior, I'm yours forever, Jesus Christ, my living Lord. Hallelujah, praise the one who saved me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. Salvation in your name, Jesus Christ, my living hope. Hallelujah, praise the one who set me free. Hallelujah, death has lost its grip on me. You have broken every chain. There's salvation in your name. Christ, my living hope. Then came the morning that 
sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion cleared the grave has no claim on me let's go again then came the morning that sealed the promise your buried body began to breathe out of the silence the roaring lion declared the grave has no claim on me Jesus yours is the How's your hope scale now? Did it come up a little bit? A couple of notches maybe? Jesus is our hope. I just uh, got word we need to pray for Terry and Connie Summers. They are off on vacation and um, they're headed toward the coast. So I don't know if you've heard what's happening over on the coast but they're kind of stuck in the, the storm over there. So please pray for them, that they don't get blown all the way home. So, all right. Father, thank you so much. You are with us, and we praise you for that. Thank you for becoming our living hope. Uh, you're not dead, you're not in a grave. You're alive, and Lord, you are with us. And Lord, you're fulfilling your promises day by day. Your mercies are new every morning to us. And Lord, we're grateful for the, the way that you've saved our souls, you've forgiven our sins, and, and Lord, you're transforming us more and more into your own likeness. And one of these days, Lord, you're just gonna you know, pluck us out of here and you know, take our souls and, and just go home to heaven forever. God, thank you for being our hope. I'm praying for your blessing and encouragement in everybody's life here. Lord, if we're down, if we're despondent, if we're in great anxiety, Lord, you're, you're the answer. I'm praying, Lord, that you just reach in and touch and lift every heart and soul. I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for being with us this morning. You are dismissed, and the exit door is that way.